Boris Johnson is finally gone! Uh, kind of. He has resigned, finally, but apparently he's like, oh, I'll stay on as Prime Minister until a new leader is selected, which I think isn't going to be until about autumn time, which is stupid, I think, if he's resigning, you know, find a way of getting him out right away before he does even more damage to this country that he has already done. And the thing that got him, the thing that got him was the lying. This man had COVID. And that didn't get him. But the lying got him. All the people dying from COVID didn't get him. <clears throat> Something that I've just gotten for the first time in three years. That didn't get him. It wasn't his Brexit plan, which was in itself a lie. The other ready Brexit plan, which was the thing that won him the general election in 2019. No. That didn't get him. It was the lying. It was the, well, uh, I wasn't aware that the man I appointed as Deputy Chief Whiff was a sexual predator. Although you already knew this and knew there were investigations ongoing. It was the lying that got this man out. And it is also in fault the part of all the Tories who enabled him for all of these years, they knew he was a liar throughout and they enabled him this entire time throughout him not going to COBRA meetings for COVID, through him hosting parties, through him just everything. They enabled his behavior and the Tory party finally were like, oh, this is one thing that we can't get away with enabling. This is the one lie we can't get away with saying, oh, you know, because this is an issue within the Conservative Party in itself. We've seen so many Conservative, or politicians in general, but Conservative MPs being done for these kind of things, and rightfully so, they should be. And this is just the one thing that they decide, oh, well, it kind of looks really bad for us politically if we stand by him on this thing. And that's the only reason he is going. They don't care, really. I'll be honest. I strongly doubt any of the ministers that resigned actually give a toss about the horrendous things that Chris Pincher has done. I'm sure they don't actually care. All they care about is, you know, this doesn't really look good for us politically and for our ambitions, both in politics and beyond. Like, the likes of Rishi Sunak, the likes of Sajid Javed, I do not and I will not be surprised if they decide to go down the George Osborne route fairly soon, get a nice cushy job at a think tank, earning hundreds of thousands a meeting just to spout rubbish to these rich people. I, I won't be surprised. Rishi maybe a little bit because he's got his father-in-law's money, so maybe he'll be willing to, you know, just faff about doing politics a bit longer. Sajid Javid, he will go and do that. Preeti Patel was one I was actually surprised, didn't stand by her boyfriend Boris Johnson, but I think Boris has a new side piece and Nadine Doris, so, you know. And that's purely because Rishi Sunak dumped him beforehand, so it was kind of like, you know, surprised, but I'm sure Preeti Patel, that absolute fucking Darth Vader wannabe is just like, oh, if I leave Boris now, I can maybe become Prime Minister because, for fuck's sake, she thinks she's the next coming of Thatcher. It's insane. We finally got rid of one of the toss pots, and now we're left with this rest of the rabble for the next probably year and a half. Well, yeah, year, no, more than a year and a half. Yeah, two years. 2024 was in the next election. And we've got Scotland trying to leave, and God, I hope they do. It's what's best for them, because I don't trust this country to not f completely forget all of the shit over the past three years and just vote in another Tory. God would help us if it's Dominic Raab who wants to strip away our human rights more and more with every single day. It's like his one thing getting him through life. This, this goal of stripping away human rights. So yes, Boris has finally gone. And now we've got to deal with the rest of them.